Thanks for tuning in to this latest update on El Nino and Outlook 2016. The question we ask in this video presentation, in addition to providing a, an updated outlook, is where is El Nino? Let's first take a look at how warm and anonymously warm, record-breaking warm February 2016 has been. This map here shows the orange and dark orange shading indicating several degrees above normal temperatures. This includes the high temperature and the low temperature. Individual high temperatures for a particular day have also been extreme, such as Santa Ana reaching 95 degrees this month, which ties the all-time high for February. Not only has it been warm, but it's been dry. In San Diego, it looks like we may set a record for the warmest February on record, around 64 degrees, but it also fits into the top 10 driest months on record, as shown in the table. Okay, what's been going on? Well, here's a look at the weather pattern today, but this has been dominant for most of the month. And we can see here that the storm track has basically buckled or gone up and over most of California in the month of February, not just Southern California. However, we do see upstream that many storms continue to plow across the Central Pacific Ocean, producing significant swell uh, across that region, especially impacting Hawaii. Now, when we did see storms this year, this is how it looked like. High pressure aloft in the upper part of the atmosphere did not go anywhere. It was shifted further to the north and the powerful jet stream was shifted a little bit further east and went underneath giving us those significant rains and wind. How are we doing so far for precipitation? After we had significant rainfall in January, February as I mentioned is a top 10 driest month for our region. Normally February even without El Nino is a wet month. You can see in our region that most of the area is below where it should be this time of the year, especially in Orange County where most locations are only about 50% of normal precipitation for this time of year. There are areas in San Diego County that are close to 90%, but that is the exception to the rule. Most of the mountain areas of Northern California are doing okay, slightly above 100% of normal. This is the water year from October 1 through February 25th. Here's a zoomed up version to give you a better depiction of San Diego County where areas are still hovering around 80 to 90 percent of normal but most of southwestern California is doing very poor about 50 percent of normal precipitation to date. This table here shows precipitation to date and also takes a look at past strong El Ninos like 82, 83, 97, 98. Take a look at San Diego, for example. In 97, 98, at this time of the year, we had received double the amount of rainfall that has occurred in our bucket so far this year. Take a look at Santa Ana and Riverside, even more extreme. You can see their departure from normal on the prior map was significant. Compare it in context to what we saw in 82, 83, 97, 98, and it's double, triple the amount of rain those years compared to this year. Now some good news is that with those same strong El Ninos, we did see significant rainfall in March and April as shown here. So the question is, where is El Nino? Well, certainly we can't blame this on the ocean temperatures in El Nino zone because as this map here depicts, El Nino not only is there, it is as strong as it's been most of the winter and just as strong as 97, 98. We do notice some differences on this year's El Nino. The warm waters don't extend as far east up to South America as shown here and the Eastern Pacific continues to run very warm and much above normal as shown in those orange and red shading. El Nino itself remains live and strong. All right, take a close look at this map here and what we're looking at is a comparison of how the atmosphere responded to El Nino. This is a look at the storm track, 82, 83, 97, 98. Clearly an area where unusual storminess in the dark purple was occurring and moving across southwestern United States. On the right hand side is this current year and you can see only a very thin area 
of storms that made it across so far into Southwest California. So the storm source region has been there, but the storms have not making it this far east. Okay, this map here shows the atmospheric response in the very upper levels of the atmosphere, say around 30, 40,000 feet. You can see 82, 83, 97, 98. The persistent unusual jet stream was in the eastern Pacific. Take a look now below at 2015-16 since December. You can see that same persistent jet stream is vividly shown in red, but it's situated and has persisted much further to the west, leaving our region on the very edge of the storm track. All right, we show this map every time, and this is what you typically expect in a strong El Nino. Notice that when we get into February, historically, that is a very wet month. March, on the other hand, for all strong El Ninos, is the wettest month on record. We've even seen some very wet marches in non-El Nino years, such as 1991. Now, also, we expect, because historically, it is so wet in these months that February, March, April typically are the wettest months in El Nino. This past February, not even close to what is depicted here. Now, what do we normally expect for rainfall in March? It's shown here. Our region normally averages an inch or two along the coast and several inches, four to seven inches, in our mountain areas. That's on a normal, typical average year in March. What do we expect over the next several weeks? Well, here is the outlook of where we expect not just normal conditions that I showed you in the prior map, but above normal conditions. Doesn't indicate whether it'll flood or not, or be a large storm, but a series of storms would likely bring us above normal as shown here for that particular period shown. And then here is what may happen in March that'll bring that storm track back and further to the east as shown here, which would, if it occurred, of course, bring precipitation back to California and in some cases significant as each wave of low pressure or L moves across the region. The hard part is determining exactly which latitude it'll affect the most. In the past month, the storms have been going just way too far to the north. We use a lot of forecast models and we take a look at what historically has happened, what normally happens, and what is projected in the actual forecast models. And they indicate the same thing, above normal probabilities of precipitation. Not a guarantee and no indication of flooding per se, but an indication that several weeks in March are expected to be above normal as you see in the green shading. Overall, giving a above normal month of March. Consider the average precipitation in March is significant and this is indicating above average precipitation. The official outlooks that were issued the other day are shown here. Green shading indicating again above average rainfall expected between March and May with most of it in March and April likely as shown here. Also notice the continuation of very warm temperatures in the northern plains and the Pacific Northwest as shown here. These outlooks are updated once a month from the Climate Prediction Center.